Hello and welcome. Aquarius are here back with another video and today we are back at the trading post. Now last week we talked about how to price gear and looking up perks, stuff like that and how I like to go about it. And this week we are going to be talking about how I look for specific items in order to either go out and farm or that I've been hoarding that we can then post on the trading post. There are quite a few items that I do like to look at and just kind of browse through. Some I might go out and farm specifically that day, others I might push back. It just kind of depends. But today I'm going to show you at least what those items are so you can decide what content you want to go and play in order to sell those items. Before we fully get into today's video, I do just want to say if this video does help you out or if you just like it, please drop it a like. It really helps me out a lot. And if you'd like to see more content like this, including more farming and build videos, definitely subscribe to the channel so you are notified when those videos go up. I do have a goal of getting to a thousand subs as soon as possible. So definitely any subs helps me out a lot. And I do appreciate all the support you guys have been showing me lately. It helps tremendously helps keep me pushing more content and all of that. So I do appreciate that. Um, I also do stream throughout the week on Twitch and now on YouTube. So definitely stop by a stream, say hello, lurk, anything you'd like. We would love to have you. But let's get into today's video. All right. So let's get this started. Let's hop into the trading post and start going over kind of some of the items that I look for. Now, I know, again, as I said in the last video, the trading post can be very overwhelming, especially for a more casual player. But I will say, even for a casual player, there's a very good chance that you actually either have items or are able to go out and farm specific items that could bring you some money, that could help, you know, just get some of those chromatic seals, stuff like that. Um, even if it's just a little bit of gold here and there, it does definitely help. So... To start it off, we're going to start with one of my favorite items to actually look at as far as making money. This is actually how I've made a lot of money in the past, and that is actually going to be craft mods. Now, there's a lot of craft mods. There's a lot to look at. As you can see, immediately when you open the head, open up the uh, trading post, you have Chilled Fang at one cent. Obviously, something like that is not worth looking into. But what you are going to want to look into are weapon craft mods and specific armor craft mods. And some of the armor craft mods are not going to be worth quite as much, but there are a couple that you may want to look into. One specifically being the squirming vine. So let's start here. Type in squirming vine. And right there. So $1,700. That's a little bit on the lower end, but I've seen the price fluctuate quite often with squirming vines. Now, the reason why they are going to be more expensive is not necessarily because Shirking Fort is the absolute strongest perk out there, but because this particular craft mod only drops in one location, which is going to be Reek Water. So there are some craft mods that are going to be a little bit more expensive specifically because that is just, they only drop in one or two places. And then the other armor craft mod that I will say, and this is going to be changing, is Adamant. So this is actually for the health perk. Now, AGS has actually come out and specifically said that they are going to be making this an easier to get mod. So I do not recommend buying this on the market. If you have any right now, though, it is a good time to sell because this price should be dropping once they throw it into the regular loot pool in some of the territories to, to be able to be dropped. So there is a very good chance that the price on Adamant will be dropping. All right, so those are kind of the two higher uh, higher armor perks that I look for for craft mods. Now, when it comes to weapon craft mods, that's where it can get a little bit tricky. So for those craft mods, what you want to be looking at is very, very popular perks. So let's say you play a lot of OPR and you're noticing a lot of people might be killing you with a very specific, uh, you know, great ax or great sword or whatever, and it has a specific perk on it. Um, you know, we'll use insatiable gravity well as an example. So if we go to the Great Axe, I believe is that the Oracalcum or is it the Reinforced? It does get a little bit confusing um, with the, whoops, it booted me out, um, with the different craft mods and trying to remember them, but New World Database makes it really, really easy to remember. Okay, so here is the Reinforced Oracalcum Great Axe Charm. So this is going to be around, you know, average 1500. It looks like sometimes it's going to be a little higher, maybe a little lower. But that's for Insatiable Gravity Oil, well, which is a very, very, very popular perk for a Great X user. Now, this one is available in multiple territories compared to Squirming Vines, but because a lot of people are still wanting it, it is a higher, uh, or it is a perk that has a higher demand for it. 
And so that ends up bringing the price up. So what I'm going to recommend you doing, because obviously uh, a lot of people, especially a more casual player, might not know exactly what is happening with those specific craft mods. So what I'm going to recommend, let me make sure that I have craft mods on me. I do not. Let me go grab a couple and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean because this is actually the method that I go about. So let's just go in here. Uh, I'm just going to grab some random craft mods, right? Just so I can show you guys. And when we go in here, this is the method that I go about to sell craft mods or to see if they're worth anything. There's kind of two different ways. There is the kind of lazy method. Um, and then there is the faster a little bit quicker method. So let's say we're looking at craft mods, right? So we have a brilliant animus. As I'm going through my craft mod list, um, I like to keep all my craft mods in one specific location. So I like to keep them in Everfall. And what I'll do is I'll go through all my craft mods and I will click on them. And if it has a buy order, then I will go in and look at it. So this is the lazier method. So as you can see, brilliant animus has a buy order of 161. So it means I'm guaranteed minimum that much money. We'll click into it. 186. So something like this, I might just fill a buy order on. I might uh, even just keep it. It just depends. Depends on how strapped you are for cash and stuff like that. Um, but that's kind of the quick method. So as you click through, you just click on stuff, shows up, you know, the buy orders. And then if there is a buy order, then you know it's worth it. And you can do this for consumables. You can do this for really anything. But craft mods specifically, because there's so many in a big list, uh, it does make it a little bit trickier to know exactly which craft mods are worth something without actually following the market. So like see here, chunk of crystallized ecto ectoplasm. I have 104 of them. So immediately that's a little bit of a red flag that, hey, I've put a lot. Probably a lot of other people have too. There's no buy orders, so it's not super sought after. We go to place order, three cents. So the buy orders don't always dictate whether something is actually going to be selling or not, but it does at least give you that minimum amount and it does show that there is a little bit higher demand for some stuff. Now there are going to be cases where there may not be any buy orders, but then there's only a few sell orders and they are worth a lot. So the non quote unquote lazy method would be to literally click into every single craft mod and see what it is worth um like this you'd have to go into here again no buy orders probably not going to be very expensive but hey 110 bucks so that actually was worth more so this is one example where it's like i didn't think it was going to be worth anything because there was no buy order we click into it i've got 56 of them which is another red flag normally meaning that there's not as many or that there's way too many i should say um but in this case it actually worked out where they're actually worth a decent amount so like let's say we're selling them at 100 150 bucks a pop i sell 50 of them that's a that's a lot of money that i get uh you know just for something that i've been hoarding for a while so that is one really good method that you can go about um, and again, this isn't just to the craft mods. The only reason I bring up craft mods is because a lot of those, there oftentimes will be buy orders for them. And so you can a lot of times find those buy orders as you're kind of just clicking through them. Um, you'll see a lot of people buying them in general. They're going through them, they're crafting, they're putting it on their artifacts. Um, you know, some of them are very specific perks like this one here. This is the Abyssal Attunement. Two cents buy orders. They're asking for $1,400. Uh, to purchase and then they sell for five dollars two fifty. so i mean someone like that may be buying and reselling at that point might be mass crafting or hoarding for the company it's tough to say a lot of people though are probably just flipping them they'll buy a bunch then sell them even if they're only making you know 450 a pop or something like that it's still money in their pocket so that is another route that you can definitely go um, for some of these cheaper mods but again, um, you don't always want to go off by order, but it is kind of a quick indication that, hey, this one is actually worth a decent amount. You know that you are getting that minimum. So that's one way that you can actually go through the market. Again, craft mods, it's not specific to that. It just makes craft mods easier because there are so many and it is hard for some people to keep up with the metas on what's popular, what's not. So that's just a little quick, easy way that I like to go through the trading post. Um, let's say I haven't looked through them in a long time. I maybe took a break or something, came back. That makes it really, really easy for me to know what's popular at the time. So that is craft mods. That is the method that I go about. Next, let's talk about glyphs. So with glyphs, let's just type in glyph. Whoa. So as we know, like stuff like above glyphs because of wall runs are not going to be worth a whole lot, right? 
what you can do is actually, because there's only a handful of glyphs, so it's not, it doesn't take too long, but what you can do is click on the glyphs, see what they're selling for, go back, click through, and just see what each one's going for. Now on our server, this is Marama, water glyphs have been the highest cost. Typically water and river glyphs are going to be worth a lot of money. Um, it, pretty, pretty easy to farm. Uh, water glyphs really aren't that bad. I've farmed them quite often. River glyphs, in my opinion, are a little bit more of a pain to farm. And then the night glyphs are definitely worth more, but these are the biggest pain to farm because you can only get them uh, at the scorpion cave where scorpion sting drops and it's it's a big pain so i don't recommend necessarily farming these unless you're going for the spear but water glyphs are great um, like i said check your server though because each server may be a little bit different with cost um, and how much you're going to get but glyphs are a fantastic way to go out farm and make money even if you're a casual you can just go there farm up all the loot in that area Go do something else, come back in an hour when all those chests have reset, do the same thing. Before you know it, you're making money because look at these water glyphs. I just sold some the other day for around 250. These ones are going for 200 right now. So you get five of those, that's a thousand dollars. And there's a good chance you could put, pull five in one run, go do something else, go do a dungeon something, come back and you might get another five, that's 2K. So glyphs are a really, really, really good way of making money. A lot of people are looking for them. You know that for a rune glass, someone has to use five in order to make it. So people are burning through them. Rune glass kind of comes and goes too. Um, so definitely glyphs are very, very high on the list of things that you want to look at. All right. So we've gone through the craft mods. Now we've gone through glyphs. Next, let's look at the consumable resources. So just... To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to start with attribute. We're just going to go straight to banana parfait. So this is actually a 48 con food that a lot of people use. I use it. The food itself sells for 47. And what you know is that this is a food that is selling, right? So any of the 48 attribute foods, and you can actually check at the kitchen as well and see what those foods are. Otherwise, just go to the attribute to see them there. But any of the 48 attribute foods, or most of them, are probably selling because they're pretty cheap to make. But what it does take to make are these ingredients right here. Now, a lot of you might have seen my sugar video in the past for farming sugar. Definitely a really good way to still make money or just to farm up for your own crafting for consumables. But what you can do is when you look at these consumables, look at the materials that are involved. These materials, you know that a lot of people are utilizing these materials in order to make these consumables. So you know that some of these are probably going to be worth something. Not all of them because some of them are going to be easier to farm. We'll take a look at bananas. $3.52 per banana. That's really not all that bad. Um, let's look at sugar now. Sugar prices go up and down. They are a little bit low on price right now. They're at around five, six dollars that can bounce up to 10. Um, not super often. It just depends on how many people are out and farming it, but that's still pretty easy money. So definitely looking at the popular consumables. Like I said, go to attributes. Let's look at Dex foods, right? Um, this one is going to be the banana pudding. These are also selling for 46, same deal, sugar, banana, um, honey doesn't sell for quite as much, um, but it is a free one that you can get in every single territory. So if you're in settlement, farm your free honey, you know, it's, uh, you know, if you get four pieces, that's two bucks. It doesn't seem like much, but it adds up when you're just hanging out around settlement or just passing through. So consumable, uh, resources or materials are definitely worth looking into. Um, look at the 48 attribute foods because again, sugar, mint, bananas, any of that stuff is selling right now because people are burning through their resources to craft those consumables. Consumables are a great way of making money though, because once someone drinks it, that is gone. It's out of the world. There is no more of it. Um, you know, so it's not like a trophy mat where once someone has it, they're not going to buy more than three because they already own those three. So with consumables, um, specifically consumables, people are burning through it. It is a consume or it is a resource that is continually going to have to be flowing in the game for people to continue to use those consumables. So really, really good way of making money. Again, you're not going to get rich super, super fast, but these are ways that you can make money over time, casually playing the game, doing whatever you want to do in the game. All right. The last thing that I'm going to show you on the trading post of how I like to make money are moats. All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, Arcana. 
So these are the moats. Now, moats are really, really easy to farm nowadays. Obviously, specifically farming some of these moats can be a pain, um, but they're really not too bad. Water moats are really easy, stuff like that. Um, but what you want to see is you want to go through on your server specifically because each server will have, you know, slight differences depending on the meta of that server or uh, what that server is wanting or who's farming what. It, it's tough to say, but I do see prices fluctuate quite a bit between servers. So check your own and make sure that the prices are good still before you just go out and farm something because it looked like it was high price in my video. So death mounts, um, you know, pretty high up fire, fire mounts not bad soul mode so just click through each one see what they're at and then you also want to see what like the quintessence are going for because if you have your arcane leveled up you definitely could maybe try to get some bonuses get that you know get the quintessence but a lot of times you're going to make the most money just selling the raw like lowest tier moats um so usually that's what i'll do now in order to get those moats obviously you can go out and farm specifically for them if you want which is definitely doable the other option though that I'm going to show you, and again, this is a money making way that I like to make money or that I like to just hoard gear because I tend to hoard a lot of stuff, is getting yourself tools that will have the specific moats. So go and look on your market, see what moats are selling for the absolute most on your market. Then from there, if you have the money or the crafting abilities, go and get tools, all of your tools. So soul modes have been highest on our server for a bit and so that's why i actually have tools that all have soul modes so every single thing that i'm going out and farming i am getting soul modes or at least a chance of getting soul modes meaning that's like 70 cents for farming mint right well that mint on top of that might be worth 10 bucks so then you start adding that up and you start you know farming and you might not get your mint every time you might not get enough wood or whatever you're stacking more and more moats. It's more and more money for you. So making money in New World definitely is overwhelming for a lot of casual players, but it is very, very doable. And it it it's just takes a little bit of, you know, understanding that you won't make as much money as someone who might be grinding out absolute serious hours, you know, grinding the game really, really hard, trying to get uh, as much as they can for money. So it might be a little bit slower progression, but for me, I need to enjoy the content. And by making money this way, I'm able to enjoy all the content that I want to enjoy, make money on the side, or specifically target specific resources to make money on or to use. And then with like my tools, I'm making extra money by farming all the, you know, different supply crates. I'm making money if I pull specific craft mods. There's just a lot that goes into it that... You can make money passively by just playing the game. You might not get rich quick. Um, and I know some people are looking for that kind of get rich quick type of a deal. But for me, it's way more important for me to enjoy the content, to enjoy what I am doing in the game. And if I get money with it, great. That is fantastic because then it just allows me to continue to buy stuff, to get more builds going, to get better tools, anything like that to just keep progressing in the game. All right. That is going to do it for today's video. So I know it was kind of a lot with the trading post, but these are kind of the little tips and tricks that I do on the trading post. I I will completely drain my, <laughs> my character of his gold. And then I will just do these little tips because I don't, I don't do, I don't sell all the time. I'm not, I'm not selling stuff all the time. I should, but I just know that I won't. So usually what happens is I hoard a bunch of stuff. I just keep saving everything. And then all of a sudden I'll go out, spend a bunch of gold, go to my storage, start selling stuff. Just start selling stuff that I've been stockpiling, stuff that maybe I thought what I was going to use, but it sat there for months. So obviously I'm not going to use it. And that's worked really, really well for me. Obviously it's this method, these tips aren't gonna work for everyone, but it has worked really, really well for me. And I just really wanted to share it with you guys. Again, you guys liked last week's trading post video and I do have certain things that I like to do with the trading post that keeps it fun for me. I enjoy it. I I don't mind, you know, spending all my gold and then just making, you know, my gold kind of slowly passively over time. Sometimes I might pull a piece of gear that'll just give me a big jump. Um, but honestly, making gold in New World can be really, really stressful for some people, and I just want to make it a bit less stressful for you guys because it is really fun to play the game, but I think it's too 
it's too much of a gold sink for some people where they just they think they need all this gold in order to enjoy the game meanwhile you can enjoy the game go and do some of this content and make your money while enjoying the content so that's the most important thing for me is enjoy the content play the game have fun with it don't let the gold get you down too much because the gold is not everything in the game it makes it easier it definitely does make it easier i won't lie about that but there is so much in the game that a lot of people can enjoy i'm not saying everyone will enjoy all the content but i've really had fun just going out doing what i love to do and just figuring out hey i can make money doing this so that's how i like to make money in new world hopefully this has really helped you guys out uh, i know it's kind of a long video of just talking about the trading post but i really want to help you guys out with getting your gold on track and feel a bit less overwhelmed with the trading post because i know that it's bringing a lot of players down and just know a lot of people are in the same boat but we will get through it together but that is going to do it for today's video so thank you very much for hanging in there watching today's video hopefully it's helped you out if it does help you out definitely drop the video a like it helps me out a lot and like i said before if you want to see more content like this definitely subscribe to the channel so you're notified with our goal of a thousand subs we are definitely getting closer and i do appreciate all the support you guys are giving me that is going to do it for today so until next time i'll see you guys later